Well, they may take your Bible this morning and find Luke's gospel in chapter number two. And again, as I, as I shared the other night, it may be by now, over the last several weeks, your Bible may just naturally fall open to Luke chapter two, as is, um, as in this Advent season, we have walked through that great, spectacular, marvelous announcement that the angel made that first Christmas night to those lowly angels. And we're taking those key words in that announcement because there's so much truth, so much truth in that passage, and we want to glean as much as we can out of it. And uh, as you're finding Luke chapter 2, as we conclude the Advent study this morning, I want to tell you about a young man by the name of Michael Clark. And Michael was going to be adopted. And he was so very excited when they set the date that he and his adopting parents would appear before that judge and it would become official that he would now have a family. He was so very excited that he invited everybody that he knew, which included his entire kindergarten class. And as word got out about this great news and this big event, even the local news showed up to capture some of the moment. And I want you to watch the video. Oh, oh heck no. And to Dad, is there anything you'd like to say? One, two, three. No, this process has been amazing. Uh, we've been working with Catholic Charities and the workers there have just been amazing. They, I love my daddy. They, wow. I <laughs> love my daddy so much. This is just too much. This is just too much. So Michael shows up all dressed up with his little bow tie and invited everybody, everybody he knew because it was good news. And the truth is, is that we like to be a part of good news. We, we want to be invited to be a part of good news. And then when you and I, when we have good news, we want as many people as possible to be a part of that. And that is exactly what happened 2,000 years ago when God dispatched that angel to those lowly shepherds to make this announcement so that everyone, all, even 2,000 years later, as you and I open the Word of God, we would still hear about the good news. And that's what I want you and I to examine together this morning in this final study in this Advent series is to understand that this good news of great joy is for all the people. So let's stand together in honor of the reading of God's Word, Luke chapter 2, beginning in verse number 8. And in the same region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And if you remember, these shepherds were raising, tending to those lambs, those sacrificial lambs that were to be used in worship in the sacrificial system. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. May God bless the reading of his word. You may be seated. Take your pencil, take your pen, underline that key phrase this morning, for all the people. Just underline that phrase, for all the people. This good news of great joy is for all the people. I mean, this message goes on to change the course of history, but it is not just for the elite, for the religious, for the scholars, for the wealthy. This is good news for all the people. Now, I think there's a tendency for us to maybe exclude ourselves. Well, you know, I, I do believe that God is love, and I believe that God's done marvelous things, and I believe that maybe even God sent His Son, but I don't know if I'm worthy. 
I don't know if I'm good enough. I don't know of religion or faith or heaven is for me. Well, there's really this morning just a couple of truths that I want us to examine together. And the first is this. What I want you to understand is that this good news of great joy that's for all the people, listen, there are no exclusions. There are no exclusions. This is for all the people. Now, as I begin thinking, as I probably shared Christmas Eve just a couple of nights ago, is that I didn't understand really the, really the power of that word behold until I just began studying it, just examining the Scriptures. And as I began thinking about that phrase and studying in Scripture for all the people, I'll tell you what it reminded me of. There, is so, there are so many similarities between this promise in Luke chapter 2, 9 and 10, it reminds me so much of John chapter 3, verse number 16. You know it, very familiar. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You and I probably, we know that verse, familiar with that verse. I learned, raised up, learning that King James Version. Whosoever will See, when you and I in Luke chapter 2, watch this, Luke chapter 2, this good news that's for, uh, good news of great joy, that is for all the people, that phrase reminds me of the whosoever. This good news of great joy that's for all the people is the whosoever's. Whosoever will. I mean, the Bible tells us, it's one of my favorite verses and uh, words in Scripture, John chapter 11, verse 26, and whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. John chapter 12, verse number 46, I am come a light into, a wor into the world that whosoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. Acts chapter 2, verse number 21, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be what? Saved. Acts chapter 10, verse 43, to him give all the prophets witness that through his name, here it is again, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. Romans chapter 10, very familiar verse, verse 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, shall be what? Whosoever. I love that. Whosoever, if they'll believe, shall be saved. Over and over again, we are reminded in God's Word that whosoever can be saved. Whosoever. All the people. This good news of great joy is for the whosoevers, that if they would receive it, can be saved. Saved. Now, who does the Bible, who is the Bible speaking of, particularly, specifically, as it speaks of all the people, the whosoevers? Well, I believe, first of all, it speaks of all classes of people. It speaks of all classes of people. Write this down in your notes. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse number 2, the rich and the poor meet together. And the Lord is the maker of them all. The rich and the poor meet together. He is the maker of them all. Salvation is not a respecter of persons. That when it comes to God's offer of salvation, it is to both the rich and the poor. I mean, it is to all classes. I've always loved this statement. I love this phrase. The ground at the cross is level ground. I mean, all classes of people, whosoever, all the people. It includes the cultured and the illiterate. It includes the millionaire and the pauper. Whosoever, all the people, means all classes of people. It not only means or speaks of all classes of people, but it speaks of all colors of people. Chances are, if you grew up in church, you're probably familiar with what I believe to be one of the greatest songs ever written is that children's song, Jesus Loves the Little Children. All the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white, 
They are all precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world, all the people. This good news of great joy is for all the people, all classes, all colors. That mean, I mean, that means the, the white man, the black man, the brown man, the red man, the yellow man, the mixed man. God's offer of salvation is both to the Jew and the Gentile. All the people, the whosoevers. I mean, it means the Norwegians, the Swedes, the, the Belgians, the French, the Japanese, the Chinese, the Spaniards, the Italians, the Greeks, the Germans, the Russians, the Indians, the Egyptians, the Canadians, the Africans, the Mexicans, anyone that you can name, anyone that you can think of, his offer is to all classes and all colors. Amen? I just was uh, sharing this message at our downtown campus. And we had some young people down there that we commissioned, we prayed over, that are leaving tomorrow morning using their Christmas vacation. They're going on a mission trip. They're going to Guatemala. And I asked them a few weeks ago as I was meeting with them and praying for them, tell me about the work, tell me about the mission. And boy, it just excites me that we have young people. We have college-age students. We have some young people that are spending some of their Christmas break going to serve to take this good news of great joy to the nations. Why? Because, listen, this good news is for all colors, all classes. It is for everyone. Every person can say that Jesus died for me. The Bible says this in Isaiah 55, in verse number 1. It says this, Come, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And he who has no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money, without price. Come, everyone. It speaks to all classes. It speaks to all colors. But it also speaks to all conditions. All conditions. See, this good news of great joy is not just for good people. But it's for the good and the bad. It includes the lowest, the meanest, as well as the grandest and the purest. And it doesn't matter how wicked you've lived or how pure you've lived. It doesn't matter how many sins you've committed. I mean, there may be some of you that would say, Alan, I've, I've committed 10 out of 10 of the commandments, if not outwardly, certainly in my heart. Friend, it doesn't matter how guilty. It doesn't matter how much of a sinner you are. God's offer of salvation includes all conditions of people. All conditions. All conditions, all colors, all classes. You need to get it down big, bold, and plain, and straight that this good news of great joy is for all the people. See, Cottage Hill and the message, this love where you live and this mission sending, it's for every single person, every man, woman, boy, or girl in the city of Mobile, in the state of Alabama, in the United States, and around the world. That's the reason we have partnerships locally here, and then we are doing things around the world. We're going to do even more in this next year because you've been giving, you've been going, you're willing, you're generous. We're going to do more than I believe we've ever done done before because there are people who need to hear the name of Jesus. Now we need to know there are no exclusions. But there's another truth I want to give you this morning. It's this. There are also no exceptions. And this is very important. God's offer to all the people, to the whosoever's, there is one condition. And what you need to know is this. The, 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 the good news is for everyone, but they must come on God's terms. They must come His way. You see, anyone, anyone can be saved, but it is important to understand that there's only one way to be saved. Amen? I said to you earlier, this Luke chapter 2, 9 and 10, it reminds me so much of John 3, 16. What is John 3, 16? Once again, what does it say? For God so loved you, me, loved the world, that he gave his one and only Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Whoever. But here's what they must do. Believe. Right? They must believe. There are no exceptions 
in how one obtains salvation. You ought to underline, if you have your Bible open at John 3, 16, you ought to underline that word believe. Believe. You see, what I did here in Luke chapter 2, I underlined that phrase, all the people, and then in the margin of my Bible, I wrote the word whosoever. Because those two phrases, those, that, that word whosoever, and that phrase all the people, they just go together. And so everyone, Everyone needs to hear. Everyone needs to know the good news of great joy, that salvation has come. Salvation is available. But what we must understand is that there's only one way that we can come and that we must believe. We must come God's way. You see, the word believe denies that there are several ways to be saved. That word believe, it denies that there are several ways to be saved. I was reading in preparation for this morning. I was just kind of doing some reading and surveys. One of the, the emails or one of the groups that I just pay close attention to are two research groups in particular. One is the Pew Research Group. The other is the Barna Research Group. Well, the Barna Group, not too long ago, conducted a survey across America, and they determined according to their surveys, that about 34% of Americans say they are, watch this, born again. Not simply they believe in God or they believe in Jesus, but here's what they would say, is that they believe in God sending his son Jesus that died on a cross for their sins and that they have trusted him as their Savior and Lord. They would say, I am a born again Christian. 34%. Now, w- one of the reasons that we're doing all that we can do as a church and planting and replanting and adopting churches and, and going here and going there, I mean doing all that we can, is because that 34% ought to be a whole lot higher. I mean, I want it to be a lot higher. Amen? But here's what's alarming about that survey. Of that 34%, about half of them said this, even though they know Jesus and have trusted Jesus, They believe that they will go to heaven because they've been a good person. And they've tried to keep the Ten Commandments. And that they believe, even though they know Jesus and trusted Jesus, that they believe that they'll go to heaven because they've been a good person. Now, friend, we think about this all the people. We think about the whosoever's. But you see, in that John 3.16, it doesn't say whosoever lives a good life. Or whosoever keeps the Ten Commandments, whosoever, it it means, it doesn't doesn't mean that all all the people will go to heaven. I mean, that was really Cain's mistake in the very beginning in Genesis. I mean, his offering was rejected, and his brother uh, Abel's was received. Cain's was rejected because it didn't go or come God's way. Was it by his own hand and by his own sweat? Yes, but he didn't deliver it. He didn't bring it God's way. When we understand salvation and this good news of the coming of the Christ, it is for everyone, but you must receive it God's way. Salvation is for everyone. However, you must believe. You must believe. You must believe. Some people think that salvation is just simply turning over a new leaf or or living a better life. And other people think it's simply maybe joining a church and maybe even being baptized, that that will save you. But friend, that is not what John 3.16 teaches. There are not several ways to be saved. That word believe tells us that there's not several several ways to be saved. But there's another word in John 3.16 that is key. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not, what, perish. That's a very important word because that word perish declares that there is but one single way to be saved. Perish, should not perish. Now think about that. Think about that phrase, should not perish. God gave his son so that we wouldn't perish. And here's what's important about that. You see, you and I are in trouble. Every man, every woman, every boy, every girl is perishing. Everyone is perishing. 
And the reason God sent his son and the reason that, reason that angel was dispatched 2,000 years ago, that first Christmas night, to announce that great news, that good news of great joy that's for all the people is because there's but one way. And that we're all perishing. We're all in trouble. We're, there is a, the Bible says there is a, a broad road that nearly everyone is on that leads to destruction. That road is called perishing. Everyone is on that road. They're on the road to perishing. There is but a narrow way that leads to life, eternal life, and that is to be rescued in believing in Jesus Christ. Now listen carefully. There are those that you know, friends, family members, maybe people that you work with, and here is their picture of the gospel. Their picture of the gospel, and they may even say something like this, but here's the idea. The idea is your God is a mean and cruel God. Because your God says that if you don't come to church and if you don't worship me and if you don't follow me, then I will send you forever and ever to a place called hell. Eternal damnation, eternal punishment, that your God is so cruel that if you refuse to worship him, if you refuse to go to church and follow him, then he will send you to hell. That's what they say. That's what they believe. You know that. But friend, that is not the picture of the gospel. See, their idea, their picture is this. Here you are on your boat, and God comes along on his boat. And he says to you that if you don't get off your boat and get on his boat, that he's going to blow you and your boat to smithereens. He's just going to blow you up. Now, friend, that is not the picture of the gospel. Now, pay attention. This is the gospel picture. You are on your boat, but your boat is sinking. You are perishing. In fact, your boat has sunk. And you're treading water. You are perishing. But along comes Jesus in a rescue boat. And he stretches out his nail-scarred hand. And he says to you, you who are perishing, he says to you, place your hand in my nail-scarred hand and be saved and be rescued and be forgiven. Friend, that's the picture of the gospel. The gospel is this. The truth is this. The good news is this. You are perishing. We are all perishing. But the good news is God sent his son to rescue us so that we shouldn't perish but have everlasting life. That's good news. Amen? That's the gospel picture. That's the gospel story. God is love and God is grace. And long before you ever thought of him, he thought of you because he knew. Because you sin, you are in rebellion. Your life is broken. You are perishing. But he sent a rescue boat. And Jesus extends his hand and says, By faith, place your hand in my hand and be saved. True story. 1829, a man by the name of George Wilson robbed a U.S. mail carrier and was sentenced to be hanged. But he had some influential family members who petitioned the president at that time, Andrew Jackson, to pardon George Wilson. Well, Andrew Jackson, the president, actually signed the, the plea. He signed the pardon. And something very unusual happened. And you ought, to, you ought to read the story. It's a fascinating story. Because they took that pardon that was signed by the president, and they took it to the prison where George Wilson was being held, and they delivered, and they said to George Wilson, the president has signed your pardon. You are free to go. And George Wilson said, I refuse it. I do not accept it. Well, the officials, the officers, didn't know what to do. The president had signed the pardon, but he refused to accept it. It went all the way to the Supreme Court. And the Supreme Court's a fascinating story. 
And the Supreme Court ultimately said this. The value in the pardon only has its greatest of value when it is accepted. And because George Wilson refused the pardon, he shall be hanged. And he was. The pardon is of its greatest value when it's accepted. When it's refused, it's worthless. Friend, I tell you what I witnessed Christmas Eve. Our Christmas Eve, Eve services down on the island, Christmas Eve services down here and downtown and here. Let me tell you what I see every week, perhaps even this morning. I see George Wilson after George Wilson after George Wilson. That when the Lord Jesus comes along and extends his hand and says, by faith, place your hand in mine, there were those like George Wilson who refused. There were those that I have witnessed in my life that have actually even shaken their fist at the Lord Jesus, that just reject and refuse. The picture of the gospel, friend, is that you are perishing. You are perishing. But Jesus, this is the good news of great joy that is for the whosoevers, that Jesus comes along in his rescue boat and he extends that nail-scarred hand and he says to you, even today, by faith, place your hand in my hand and be saved. I wonder if you've done that. Have you ever done that? Just a simple act of faith. Just place your hand, your life in his care. Can we just pray together? Can we just bow our heads together this morning? Those of you that are watching online, just bow your head with me. There are some George Wilsons that are watching. There are some Georges perhaps here in this room And time after time, you have rejected. There may have been even times in your life you've shaken your fist at God. But I wonder today, I wonder in this day after Christmas, if today would be the day of your birthday, when you are born again, a new life, a new path, No longer on the broad road of perishing. Perishing road that leads to destruction. But today, a new path to life and purpose and mission and eternal life in heaven. God so loved you that he gave, he sent his one and only son that whosoever, all the people, that if they would believe, they would no longer perish, but have everlasting, eternal life. I'm going to pray, and after I pray, we're going to stand together. If you're watching online, I want to encourage you to, to simply text us. We'd love to be in touch with you, love to help you. Maybe text the word found to the number that's on your screen. We would love to encourage you, love to help you this morning in this room. I'm going to pray. We're going to stand and worship. Pastors are going to be here in the front. The altar is open. The invitation is a two-part invitation this morning. One, if you've never trusted Christ by faith this morning, place your hand in his hand. In fact, as these pastors come and get in place, Brother Ronnie and Brother Lonnie and And Brother Neil here, maybe you would just come. There's some some boys and girls that are here today. Why don't you take your mom, your dad, and say, "I'd, I'd like to go. I'd like to trust Jesus today. And your mom, your dad, maybe your grandmother, your grandfather will take you down to one of these pastors. And listen, you're going to place your hand in their hand. And they're going to pray with you. And they're going to help you know Jesus. 
and trust Jesus and be rescued by Jesus. Now, there's others of you. In fact, I would say by faith, most of us here this morning, we've done that. But we have some family members and we have some friends, we have some people we work with that have not. You see, in this new year, we have, our staff has planned several things throughout the year. Men's events, ladies' opportunities, parents, families, things that you can invite your friends and family members to. You can invite them to come. Because listen, we want more and more and more and more people to know Jesus. We want the George Wilsons to accept the invitation to be saved. So I wonder in these next moments, would you pray specifically for some people that you know that give very little evidence of being saved? Would you pray for them? Would you pray something like this, Lord, in this new year, Lord, give me opportunities to talk with them, to have spiritual conversations with them, that I may share my story, that I may can invite them to church, and that they would come. So in these next moments, the altar is open. These pastors are going to be available. And we're going to pray, and we're going to respond. Let's stand together. Heavenly Father, in these next moments, Lord, I pray for these that have been watching online. Lord, I pray that maybe there's someone watching for the very first time. And as you extend your hand, Lord Jesus, to rescue, to save, I pray that by faith there would be those watching via the web that would extend their hand of faith and trust you today. And God, in this room, there may be some moms and dads, some sons and daughters. There may be some this Christmas, it could be their birthday. As we celebrate your birthday, it could be their birthday as they trust you. So God, in these moments, we're going to be praying. We're going to be responding. We're going to be trusting. And we're going to celebrate together. Lord, be with us. Call us to yourself this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship together.